Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Yeah, boy, everybody. And that's an original soundtrack that was created for the show. Thank you. I got to say, Nick Johnson, thank you again. Um, We have a long history of people that have supported the show and now the network, people that have come through as interns and just literally blew the doors off of so much of what we're doing today. And I think one of the greatest blessings, and I want to welcome, welcome, welcome all of you to the show. I think one of the greatest blessings, Benny, and I think we were kind of teasing a little bit about this, is that I've often wondered, you know, how or why things show up in my life. But here's what I don't wonder a question anymore. I don't question them being there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't question things and people that I talk with, like Kate Kaplan today, I don't question why I'm talking with her today. I know that right now we are going to have a conversation about a powerful, powerful, I want to call it awakening for me today. Because here's the question, are you a parent? Are you a sibling? And this is near and dear to me. Benny, you know bits of this because I've shared bits of it, but I really haven't shared much about this the past couple of years you're a parent you're a sibling you're a family caregiver someone battling mental illness yes let's say the word let's say the word i know that i know that people don't want to say the word they want us to call it something more positive (sighs) but you know ask simone biles like what was she gonna call it what's bb more no let's talk about what it is and kate's mission to help families that are experiencing childhood mental illness, how do you navigate through the darkness? How do you navigate through the unknown? Look, here's the thing today about this show with Kate. First of all, don't be ashamed. Please don't be ashamed Mm -hmm. of what you're going through. I'm begging you that are listening to this show today, please help yourself remove the shame from your heart because these things that happen to families, to us, to the, to what goes on with a range of mental illness. And I've got to thank Kate and I've got to thank these celebrities and I got to thank these people that are coming out. Because today, if you are her and you are on a mission and you have been talking with people all over, the one thing you get is that their humanity is what comes first. Uh, Kate, thank you for joining me today. Dr. Pat, as I said, you know what? You've been a long time coming into my life and I'm so grateful to be here today because the wealth of purpose is beyond comprehension for yeah. what we are doing today yeah and what people need and want i'm right there with you um and you know it's not a surprise that was really what was heavy on my heart today was the stigma and the shame and the guilt and yeah. you know what and and it's not really for me when i think about this kate i want to ask you about this you have spoken with people all over mm-hmm. And I want to know from your perspective, this is your passion. This is you. You are out there. You are talking to people. You are a 25-year advocate for caregiver. Let's talk about what is the fuel in your heart 
that keeps this engine going to make sure that we fully understand what this journey is like, but more importantly, understand that we can be in the space of strength and compassion. You know, Doctor, um, that's, that's a challenging thought because mental illness is so enormous. Yeah. There are so many things that come into play. I will tell you great faith. And I was young to say faith because I was raised Catholic. Yeah. Uh, I was raised to be seen and not heard. I was raised to, um, I could eat with a queen or eat with the paupers, but I didn't know me. And that search for me, every single thing that's happened in my life has told me that somebody's trying, that there's a push going on because it all correlates. I've had a lot of very unusual experiences in life that have uh, not been of the ordinary when I've had friends who've had them. And uh, I've been in a major airplane accident. I've had a man try to pull me into his car at 10, a block from my own house. Uh, I had a cancer at 13, which uh, didn't allow me to have children. But in that purpose, at 11, I started praying for twin girls. Now go figure, you know what, really? And in that has been 42 years later, I have twin girls adopted. Wow. And not only did I have twin girls adopted, but I had the gift of a woman who gave me the, uh, the privilege to be a mother. I didn't know that mental illness was going to encompass that. Um, I haven't known anxiety. I don't know depression. I don't know. I had one panic attack in my life running up a hill out of breath. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And that was the lot. And I had to stop and just go, oh my gosh. But you know, um, faith, I have to tell you, it all comes back to faith and my learning through all those experiences and that time that I've devoted to myself to conquer the battles in my mental illness with my children. And I've, I'm telling you, I fought hard. I had more than enough money. I was a millionaire at one time in my own right. And today I work at Lowe's, watering plants, check to check. But the pride I have with the strength of my own two children who've persevered, that too, alone with faith, has told me that through their attempts of suicide, running away, demons, 23 living with us, that you know what? There has to be a purpose behind it. It just can't be something that's dumped in you and you go, okay, we're living today. There's yeah. got to be a purpose and that's what it was. And I love the way you're sharing this because, um, you know, these are the things that we do not talk about. We just don't come clean. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a kid from the Bronx and, you know, uh, throughout this career doing this work, I've had people try to tell me, don't say the word failure, say something oh. else. Don't oh. say the word mental illness. Oh, and, God. By, and by the way, don't talk about drug addiction and alcohol addiction. I'm saying, are you serious? Are you oh, okay. My mother was a drug addict and an alcoholic, not by her choice, but to keep her quiet. And, you know, I look back at that now and, you know, understanding a little bit about maybe what she went through. Maybe if she was in the world today, she'd be categorized, classified as bipolar. Maybe. Right. Oh, but, yeah. Probably. Or, yeah. There's enough to it. And I think enough that, to it. That's the complication, doctor. Yeah. I had to spend all of my money sitting in doctor's office, twiddling our thumbs. God yes. loves us, I've got a little girl who's just blitzed. Yeah. I don't have the questions. I don't have the knowledge to say at three when she had early onset, you got people in your head? I no more had any idea about schizophrenia than the man on the moon. Yeah. And nor to say to her daughter, mm -hmm. every, I grew up with everything getting everybody, everybody got something equally. I mean, it wasn't one favorite child or the other. But what none of us received in this lifetime was the wealth of the richness of family that we have this great perspective about, oh, marriage and family are going to be this. And we're going to have happy and outings and all. You know what? Uh-uh. My, <laughs> my daughter, Ellen Kate, didn't get me. I didn't get to give the best of my motherhood. And Caroline certainly didn't get to have the best life. But today, yeah. you know, time is, time is fair. Time is... Uh, 
time is on their side and they're still growing as I am. I love your story because I love the fact that I'm still growing. I, you know, somebody asked me, what is the greatest thing I get out of what I do? I say, I'm a student. I'm going to be talking with Kay Kaplan today. I'm a student. I am so eager to honor people's journey and understand things beyond what you pick up in a textbook. But I got to go back to something you said, because it's pivotal for me. Faith, mm, faith mm -hmm. has always been the cornerstone mm -hmm. of whether or not I get up the next day or I don't. And, you know, I watch the people in my life as probably you have and yours. And there's so many words that we could pick <laughs> to talk about yeah. this. Oh, and, and still say, shh, you're not supposed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> shh, yeah. Exactly. I went to a party and they said, don't cry. Okay. You know what? It's human. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I want to talk to you about this passion and purpose to bring and shed light on this. Now, I just have to say this. This is something you've been doing way before people at the Olympics can't perform, yeah. right? right? Way before you see swimmers break down. That shouldn't, uh, in all rights, when you look at them, they shouldn't break down. Yeah. Breaking down. What does that mean, breaking down? But you're living this. Mm -hmm. You know, you have been tapped mm -hmm. on. You've tapped been tapped. The, you've been That's, tapped. A great word. That's a great yeah. word. Yeah. Somebody came along and said, it's going to be her. We're going to give her this life situation and we're going to give it to, we're going to give it to Key. But isn't that the fascinating part, doctor? Yeah. You know, we're chosen long before we say, that's okay, right. up here, I'm, I'm going to come down and I'm going to do what I need to do. Just give it to me. And they say, that's yours. You go, okay, I'm in. Yeah. And whatever it is. What was your, can I ask you, because I think it's so important. Um, we're going to talk about what it is you're doing today in the body of work you're doing. Okay. But I wonder, I wonder, and I, I try to think about what it was like being you and going through this experience and where you got the courage and the insight. I'm going to tell you, I think it's a little Irish blood in there. <laughs> you know, I got a daddy from Flatbush. <laughs> and a mama who came off of, uh, or daddy came off a farm in um, Bondurant, Iowa. Yeah. You know, Irish is Patty's pig. There you go. And yep. I think there's a little bottom line there of perseverance. And a little anger that says, you know what? I'm not going to tolerate it if you don't give me what I need. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that played a big part in mental illness and being persevering. But I, you know what the biggest thing was? I start, and I, I had my, I had these prayer books. They were my mother and my grandmother's novenas. I can take you to the pew at St. Augustine's Church in Des Moines, Iowa at 11 that I started praying. When you talk about courage, you know, I had these two little girls they came to my former husband and I at four months, um, right out of Milwaukee. And, um, oh my dear God, just, just you want to squeeze them. They were so cute, they had so much to eat. But they are the ones that gave me the opportunity that said I had to. I couldn't have my own children. So adopting them was a gift unto itself. Praying for twins since 11, you don't take that for granted, at least I don't take that for granted. I don't take looking up and looking into a tree for granted because the texture and the wind and the breeze is giving me something to move with, right? Yeah. Anger, anger gives me something to move with. All of that encompassed kept me striving. You know, there was just a, I remember Caroline calling out to me in the middle of the night at three. Mom, mom, there's a man at the end of my bed and he told me daddy is and then he went away. What am I supposed to do with that? Right. An experience with it. So the learning curve was with two little girls and I. And how do you give up that? Um, oh, there were days, oh, I promise you, there were days that I just groveled. But you know what? You got to come back to them. You can't leave them. I don't care who it is. And uh, I don't care whether, I don't care who it is. The fear I in their eyes alone. 
I mean, I, I mean, saw my daughter, Ellen Kate, <sighs> completely shut down and move off because schizophrenia took everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And Caroline didn't know what was going on in her life. Right. We would be sleeping in a bed and Caroline would say, please, I have to sleep in the middle. I have to sleep in the middle because she thought people were coming out from underneath the bed. She thought that Ellen Kate and I had the same guys in their head that she did. But I didn't know the right questions to ask her. I didn't know the right things to look for. So when I'm working with people and I've worked with people across the ocean and right here at locally and um, just communicating those give and takes of this is what I noticed and where did you go with it? And how do you do with it? You know what? That's the purpose that God gave me. I've talked to people in front of people. Um, boy, it just warms your heart. Yeah. There are resources. Sadly, there are not the resources in Des Moines, Iowa. And I'm going to say that, and I'm sad to say it. Yeah. Because yeah. if you haven't lived mental illness, you don't know. You know, I took Caroline down to Mayo Clinic in uh, Jacksonville. Uh huh. Dr. Billy Bobo. I'm going to tell you, he was so cute. I called him, I called him Bowtie Billy Bobo. He was about <laughs> this big wore a bow tie and he came up to Caroline. She filled out an, a form before we saw him. We went down. Uh, right. And he said, he looked her in the eye, no computer, no nothing. He looked her in the eye and he said, you know what? Caroline Kaplan, I have never seen someone with schizophrenia like I'm watching you fill out that form and you look me in the eye. He said, she was one of 18% in the world high functioning. Yeah. You know what, you know what kind of a struggle that is for a little girl? Yeah. Come out and fight every day just to have a norm. She looks as normal as Patty's pig. Yeah. You know what? That thing up here is just jumping all over. Yeah. But isn't that really, Kate, and I love that you brought this up. What a beautiful story. How oh. honoring of you to really honor the journey of your children in this way. And you just said something so very important for everybody here to see yeah. on the outside, right? Oh yeah. You, I mean, we have seen this over and over again, especially in our pop cultures with celebrity a Robin Williams on the outside, you see somebody yeah. yes. and you just scratch your head because we don't really see them. No, 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 no. no. Right. We think we see them. But we, we don't really judgment. see them. We make a ton of judgments. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was, one of my biggest, oh yeah, there, doctor, this, this conversation is so encompassing because, you know, it draws me 45,000 different places. Good. Examples that could be, you know, you sit, God love our teachers, our teachers and our policemen. I will go to the ends of the earth for them. They're good and bad in everyone, but I will go to the ends of the earth. For those women who have to sit and be expected to know all the parameters outside of just teaching to the kid who does this in the back of the class. Bobby, stop doing that. Bobby, don't do that. And the kid's making fun of him. Has anyone ever really looked? That was the greatest challenge into his head and what's going on. That was the greatest challenge for 12 years of education. Carolina, no, I know. I was that kid. I know. Finished sixth grade. Believe me, I was that kid. You, yes. And I, I mean, I got thrown. Out, I was a kid. I got thrown out of Catholic boarding school at age six, and you know, oh and to this God. day, you'll see me. I mean, I, over time, I've learned what it is that's going on with me, and what I've also learned is the beauty of all parts of who I am. No. But when Linda comes and she sees a pen in my hand, she knows. <laughs> I'm going to be doing something like this. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now, you are a lifesaver. And I am looking you in the eye and I'm saying to you, and we're going to tell everybody what you're doing, but you are a lifesaver. The message you're bringing forward. Yes, of course, we're talking about saving lives, yeah. but there is a human heart, a person inside of the tapping. Yeah. 
There's a person inside of maybe the blinking. I stuttered as a kid. Jeez, you know, I mean, can you imagine me? I still stutter a little bit. Benny helps me out from time to time if I you just know, have a break between it. But I have a friend who came to grade school and uh, was a drop in. He would, he would come like sixth grade or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, devilishly handsome, but he stuttered. And to this day, he remembers one girl in our class who embraced him. That's right. And you know what? He is so successful today, but he never, yeah. ever forgot. Oh, I, and I'm the same way. And a teacher, Amy Sarah. Oh. I will never forget Amy <laughs> Sarah. Yeah. But, but what is it about these people, Kate? This is really what I want to talk to you about before we go to break. You know, I, I, the, the words that you bring forward, I want people to know this. For those of you just tuning in, you know, I want to introduce you to Kate. I want to introduce you to Kate Kaplan. And what I want to introduce you to, the forgotten thoughts for you, the caregiver. Oh, we're yeah. talking, here's what we're doing today. And I hope this is one of a lot of things we can do to support Kate. Absolutely, one of the things she and I have in common is faith. Early on, whatever that means to you, that is a powerful word. When you are in faith and gratitude, nothing else can, can, can oppose you. When you are steadfast in faith, uh, gratitude, if you are steadfast in that, Nothing over here like fear that it cannot get in. Yep. And when we get this sense of it, then how is it that Kate, you have been able to come forward, look at your life experiences, but look at the beauty of the children you've been given that has now fueled a passion for you to help all of us understand childhood mental illness, how to navigate through the darkness. And by you sharing this journey, and we're going to talk about what else you do. We have got to now be vocal. Oh, we oh, off can't the charts. be quiet anymore. Off the charts. Oh my you know, God. Did you see Aretha Franklin's movie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, just, I don't want to, I don't want to share like the punchline. <laughs> I watched this movie with my mouth opened. <laughs> mm -hmm. My mouth opened. Yeah. And I don't want to give it away. But I watched and I said, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. how many children mm. are there that went through what she went through? Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That's why we can't be silent anymore because yeah. we have to help parents not be ashamed of their children. And not be ashamed in their own lives. You know what? <laughs> yeah. I, my children and I were asked to leave parties when I knew parents had their kids had very similar issues because all you had to do was look at them and they wouldn't acknowledge it. But we were asked to leave children's parties because of it. You know what? That wasn't shame. That angered my, that fed my fuel even harder because you know what? You're not going to do that to my children. You're not going to do that to individuals who didn't ask for what they got. That's you right. know, I was chatting with a guy and uh, he was schizophrenic. It was uh, down in Florida and I drove down and camped down there. And um, he, he said to me, I said, hey, are you, have you got people in your head? He goes, way too many of them. And he was just filthy. And he, had, he said to me, I'm, uh, I'm working my way to, to Iowa. And I said, Iowa, I'm from Des Moines. He said, I'm going to Urbandale. And I said, how are you getting to Urbandale? He said, they told me to walk the back roads. I said, here's my number. I want you, if you ever need anything, call me. Mm -hmm. But when you come to Des Moines, more importantly, I want to meet you. Wow. You know where I found him? At Goodwill, working part-time. Wow. He walked four months to wow. get to Iowa because he had children here. Mm. You the see, this is... Of that alone? Yeah. Oh, my God. How can you not honor a man like that who's just beside himself? He can't even function because of all these people, but the perseverance to see his child in Des Moines, Iowa, Urbandale, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I wanna talk about this when we come back from there, right because there's something there's you there. and me and, mm -hmm. and, and the folks we're talking about, we have one thing in common and people often ask me this question, how do you do it? Where do you get that perseverance from? This is a great question because if you are a person 
that has come in the world and the world sees you as less than you mm. come in the world if you've got a soldier on your side if you've got a kate on your side mm. and what you learn what you learn about how to become a warrior in life yeah. is invaluable when we come back we're going to talk about exactly what kate's doing but before we go to break how do we tell people how to find out more about you and then how do we get a hold of you? I mean, I want people to go to your Facebook page, everything. Let's tell everybody that now, Kate. You know what? I, I have a Facebook page called Kate Kaplan, Health and Life Coach. And um, I am accessible. I have my videos on there. Some are too long to load up, so I'm learning how to do that. But I have videos that I've shared with people across the country. I have a Facebook page called mentalillnessiowa.com. And I am on LinkedIn under... Uh, Kate McLaughlin Kaplan. Perfect. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, here's what I want you to hold in your heart for a minute from Kate. This is what Kate says. I'm Kate. And I want you to know the mental illness and the stigma, the uncertainty, and the great big hole in the universe that makes, that it makes in the lives it touches needs to be talked about. One more time. I'm Kate, and I want you to know that mental illness and the stigma, the uncertainty, and the great big hole in the universe that it makes in the lives it touches needs to be talked about. When we come back, you're going to find out exactly how she's doing that. Let's take a short break, Benny, Jamie. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Um, I, I, Kate Kaplan is joining me here today. I, I, I've got to just say this again, and then we're going to talk about what does a person do? Okay. If, if you're Kate and if you're me, and somehow you've been tapped, and there is something that you are called to do. Now, I have had readings by Adrian Cobb, a whole lot of people, and they're very clear to me. There's nothing that I can do to not do what I'm doing, to not build the network, to not bring positive thought. They're very clear. I just look at them like, okay, if you're Kate Kaplan or Katie, if you go to the website, you'll see it. A lot of great pictures. I, I just, I just love Kate. If you go here, read this sentence over and over again. Think about your brother, your sister, maybe your mom. Mm. Think about somebody you know, especially during these past 20 months. I'm Katie, and I want you to know that mental illness and the stigma, the uncertainty, and the great big hole in the universe that it makes mm. in the lives it touches needs to be talked about. Yep. Not just a few minutes in People Magazine or somebody out there. It needs to be talked about. Katie. Thank you for joining me here today because you are out in the world talking about it. I would love for you to share with people what you, the path you're on that you can't avoid doing. I don't care. I don't care where you're working, <laughs> paycheck to paycheck. You are not going to be able to not do this. Right? Oh, no. Uh -uh. This is my next Look, 40. I was homeless at 17. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, I knew at 17, one, I was going to be the best hot dog seller ever two, that I was saved by an angel, and three, that there was an unlimited universe. You yeah. are stepping into it and doing something that, that is so needed. Tell people about what you did, what action you took to literally live that statement. You know, um, uh, thank you. I, I, uh, let me just regroup here for a minute. Um, hmm. After my children moved out, Caroline, uh, had been away from home, and she is my daughter who has schizophrenia, mm -hmm. had been away, um, oh, a, a good portion of three or four years when we were growing, when she was growing up in her mid-teens. Um, and my daughter moved out, her twin sister, Ellen Katie, moved out at uh, 18. And um, it was then that I went through my own spiral down. In two years, I sold a house, bought a condo, sold a condo, 
bought another condo, sold another condo. I moved five times in two years. Hello, something's loose up there, but something's following a path because there's a cleansing going on and I just have to move through it. Mm -hmm. And with that, people were just, you know, I didn't have a lot of confidence growing up. If I couldn't wear clothes beautifully and go into a room and know everyone's name and connect everyone, which was my gift from my father, and connect everyone. Cleary and his wife, Shara Ray, said, I wouldn't have known what to do. I wouldn't have known how to live. And I think that perseverance is part of the courage because I, in my own way, thought I was never good enough, never smart enough with the kids I was. They wouldn't call me back. I always had to call them, yada, yada, yada. So in this journey, after my, I saw the strength of my girls and what we'd lived through for 18 years, 23 demons, single parenthood, I knew that I wanted to be rural because they had nothing in regards to mental illness. They had no support. The medicine was way behind. I meet with women in a church basement because they are embarrassed to see my truck pull up and I'm not going without the truck. Right. <laughs> truck pull up. And, you know, I park it a block away out of a courtesy and I meet with them in the basement of a church. And um, it's so important. We have become in a society that just says this. Oh my gosh, yeah. And, it, and, and it's, it's so, we're becoming more insular all the time. And the thing that frightens me is that we're going to lose even more contact. And I think that's what pushes me with what I gained through my children's illness was my own wealth of character to come out of it and the strength that they gave me in this loss of childhood that they experienced. Education was abominable. Medications were never thought twice about. Yeah. Um, there was just, every time I asked a reasonable question as a parent, I got this standard book answer. So it was, that was, that wasn't very good for me. So I bought this RV off a guy. I was throwing packages at Christmas on UPS with a guy in Norwalk, Iowa. And he had a trailer. He had an RV to sell. He and his daddy were hunters. And they had it out in the fields. And uh, a wonderful man in my life, Gary, got this truck with me. And there was deer blood all in it. We cleaned this baby up. And I had found a guy who painted walls on um, murals on walls, yeah. He gave him some ideas and he brought this truck to me and, and he painted it for me and I was off and running. So I would drive and people would honk and I'd pull into Casey's grocery stores and I would just sit and I, I, have, um, um, I have questionnaires that I give people and I say, hey, will you just take two minutes and fill this out for me? And they do and it breaks down who they are by what their little habits are. And in that it has allowed me to gain information of those rurally who said, Where, what are you gonna do with this and what is? And you know what, I just said, I just wanna keep you in my thoughts that when I'm working with people and traveling rural rounds from Northeast Ooh. Iowa to Northwest Iowa, um, that I, I can have a collection of information that I, we can put together and show that we're not alone. I can say, you know, I just met with some people and this is so similar. And um, it's just the old fashioned yeah. value of talking and learning to talk. And the strength of my growing up and getting stronger all the time and trying to come through this lack of self-confidence because I am a smart woman and I am very capable. It took me a long time to get there. And I don't care whether people see that or not. It's important that I see it. And you're yeah, right. Yeah, me too. I, I have the same right. journey. Yeah. And you're right. And um, I've known all along that there was purpose. And I knew that when my girls, oh, the wickedness of, I can tell you stories, Dr. Pat, of schizophrenia mm -hmm. <laughs> that are unbelievable. The, the, my daughter, we're living in Colorado and we have a house that has, we're renting, thank God. We have a house that has a front door with two windows on the side. You go through a hallway and look out the back and it's the same door with two windows out the back. Well, when there are demons, they say never have that because it's a place they can flow in and out of. Yep. So 
my daughter and a sitter are there. I had two standard poodles at the time. And all of a sudden the poodles are butt to butt barking at the doorways. And there are two shadows in the doorway. And I wasn't home at the time. And my daughters were with someone taking care of them. And I came home and they told me this story. So a year to that date, we left Denver, came back to Des Moines. And my daughter, Caroline, who's schizophrenic, as I said, is sleeping in a sunroom off my bedroom um, so that we can be close and need each other, et cetera. And we had these bamboo shutters on the window. And as God is my witness, she screams in the middle of the night, mother, mother, they're showing me how they die. And there is a noose, a long noose and a short noose on these bamboo shutters, so distinctly represented that I can see the wrapping like you'd see in the old south of a noose coming down and I shake the shutters and they blow like this and then they disappear. As God is my witness, I can tell you any number of those stories. When my daughter lives through that silently, and this is the hint that I'm given from up above that's divine that says, you have got to understand more of this and help. That's, those are the things that came to me. And you can't share that if somebody doesn't understand it. Right. right. So that's the thing that pushes me on the journey. And then my journey, when I get on the road, I stop, I set up a chair and I just wait. I'm in a parking lot at a grocery store in Florida. I'm at a restaurant in Georgia on my way down. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've got people coming up to me saying, who did the artwork? Oh my God. And then all of a sudden they get into, you know, my mom used to suffer something or I had a brother and that's how the story starts. And that's where the continuum of needing to be on the road and be public like you're affording me. Yeah. That works. And, and it really all ties back into what we started to talk about before you know, there is a purpose and there's a passion and then there's unwavering faith and the strength we get from that to take the action we need to take. And that's why it was so wonderful when I found out you were joining me today is because I want people to go and take a look at Facebook. I want them to contribute to your cause. And I think for us, if we are not out there talking about it, and in your case, you are doing it. You know, you're visibly out there and the, and honestly, the van is awesome. You know, for somebody like me, when I look at an image like that, I'm like, oh, this is like amazing. I was and, like a out of San Francisco. <laughs> I, I was just thinking that myself. I, I, I did kind of yeah. reminded me of a time I spent in San Francisco, actually. Yeah. Um, but, but it, but it is, it, what it is, is what we need now, because this is the time to be bold and not belittled, yeah. right? This oh, is the, yeah. right, bold right. and not belittled. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And those, right? and how oh, off the charts. And your words are, um, I want to put them on a T-shirt: bold and not belittled. I'm telling That's you, right? Because it's um, put that on your band. You know, I, I have these. I have these young kids that just came by. And um, one I know from personal experience and he, he knows me and he was with this group of kids in the walkway, walking to lunch from a local high school. And I said to him, hey, I didn't acknowledge him. I didn't let them know. And I said, hey, listen, I've got this picnic table. My dear friend, Gary built this picnic table for me that's 12 feet by five feet, COVID appropriate. And it took nine of these kids to move it. So I said, hey, if you guys come, uh, I'll pay you. And they said, oh, no, 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 don't pay us. No, 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 no. And I said, okay, but if you'll move this for me in my yard, that would be great. So they did. I've got them on video and I've got mm -hmm. a picture of them rallying. Yeah. And um, yeah. And uh, uh, so I said, listen, I'm going to buy you lunch. Okay, buy you lunch. And then I said, I'm going to call your principal because you're going to be late and I'm going to speak with him so nobody gets in trouble. Okay, so I called the principal and I said, look, there were nine young men just in my yard. And these are kids that I would imagine haven't always had the easy road. But I want to you to know that I made them late. And I want you to, I'm asking you to acknowledge them at the school for what they just did. And I offered to pay them and they said, no. These are nine kids that I'm darn sure of mm. 
don't have a lot of means. Yeah. You know what that principal did? He said he walked them to every classroom independently and told the class what they did and that I had called. And he said they glowed. He yeah. said they were so proud. Yeah. We need, that's that kind of thing. And you know, this little guy was this size, my baby finger, the smallest of all of them, never acknowledged me. But you know what? We just don't take the time anymore. We don't. We don't take the time. And, you know, sometimes you have to Excuse be. Excuse me, I'm, I'm shaking it. I get so passionate. I, the story it. is so <laughs> passionate and it is, it is, it is a beautiful act. And you know what I love about it? is yeah. the boldness of this you know gloria steinem said to me once oh, i met you know, her yeah yeah oh, me too. yeah geez. so she, she looked at me and she That's said cool. look you've yeah. got to do something outrageous every day pat you mm -hmm. have to do something outrageous every day and i didn't quite understand it took me a lot of years but see what you did was more than an acknowledgement what happens when you pay forward moments of self-encouragement oh. moments of honoring other people when you oh. paid that forward it's hard to explain other than the way you just did it how valuable that is it's like we were talking about during the break like the guy in your class that stuttered that remembered the one oh, the one woman yeah, me, it's Amy Sarrow. Amy Sarrow, my teacher. I couldn't put a sentence together on paper. I mean, forget about grammar and punctuation. <laughs> and made me, she made me the president of the Future Teacher Club. Ooh, what? That's big. That's big. It's wow. crazy. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I'm just trying to even speak without yeah. stuttering. And I found myself, and I brought this thing home. It's like a plaque. I still have it, by the way. And I brought it home. And my stepmom just cried. Mm -hmm. Now, she's not crying because it's something bad. Yeah. But I later on, I understand the depth of those tears. Oh. See, you're doing this. Yeah. There's a depth to what you're doing. I, I want to go a little pop culture on you for a minute. Okay, good. Let's go pop culture. One of the most popular movies, I think, pretty much ever, was James Cameron's a Avatar. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah. I know he's redoing it, and I love Zoe Saldana. But there's a moment in the movie that anybody that has never been seen in the world, people like me, growing up, you're not learning different. You're really just, you're defective. You're a defect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a, there's a point in the film, and you remember this? And it was a moment, and I think, think she said something like, I see you. And that's all it takes. But that's what you're doing, because most of the folks that we're talking about, they don't get seen. They don't get honored. They do get belittled. And this has got to stop we have got to stop you know why we have to stop let me get rolling here we only have a few minutes left but i just got to say this i watch numbers believe it or not almost flunked out of my graduate program even getting into Claremont was a miracle getting into that program that's a story for another show oh i'm telling you we gotta have but it. I almost flunked out yeah but i got help mm -hmm. and Vinda from Thailand came in and saw me in the back of the class and she she asked me to take notes for her and I did. So I'm sitting in the class and and Dale is up there with the, all the statistics and the board is full and Vinda comes in right from Thailand and she sits next to me and starts to copy the paper. Yeah. And she's looking at what is on she says what are you doing? This has read. What are you doing? I said I'm I'm copying the paper for you. I got this right. She said, You're, none of what you have on your paper is what's on the board. I said, it absolutely is. She <laughs> said, no, it's not on the board. This Vinda moment got me through this year because she looked at it and said, I'll make you a deal. You mentor me on concepts, constructs, theories, yeah. and diagrams, and I will get you through statistics. Ah. But she saw me. Yeah. And Katie... Kate, what you're doing, oh, I can't sorry. put into words what that means to people. And you must continue. 
Tell us how we can find out about what you're doing. Tell us how we can. You must continue this. What you I want must to do, continue this. It, oh, I will continue it. What I want to do is be on a platform. And Got to be. this is valuable. What I am doing is I'm keeping this uh, RV, or I'm going to get a new one because this is about on the paplunk. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just the wealth of driving and stopping. You got to ask a question. How are you today? And just sit and they'll tell you. And what I need is uh, I've had wonderful generosity from three individuals, a, a family foundation whose daughter had been murdered uh, in Denver, gave me money, a personal individual gave me money. I want rural America dealerships to give me money. The rural people have been so good to them and supported them. It's now their time to give back and support. And that's the kind of support that I want. What do we need to do to get That's it? a big one, but you know no, what? No, it's not. It's not. Look, it, let me know, tell you something. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Here's what's big. Yeah. Raising children. Oh. With the, let's talk about big. Epic. Raising beautiful children that the world wants to stigmatize and being on a show like this to talk about them and honor them. That's epic. Can raising money. Yeah. Raising money. Yeah. Can I just say one thing you before can. we close? You can say whatever you please. I want to I want to honor my brother who just passed, Kevin McGlough. Mm. And I want to honor my children, Ellen Kate Kaplan Dalen and Caroline Brady Kaplan. Because today, Ellen Kate Kaplan is a trained chef. She suffers from OCD, hypochondria, um, uh, anxiety, depression. I mean the gambit. But she has a child. Oh. And she is so successful in her own right. I never thought that would happen. She's my little one who just backed out of the world because schizophrenia took so much. My Caroline has persevered. This girl didn't have more than an eighth grade education. I'll say sixth grade education. She says eight. Um, and I honor her every day. She has fought. She has tried to cashier. She's, she's worked at all these different jobs, done it to get it on her own. But the damn anxiety just won't let her have it i know and the and the and the medications medications are a thought unto themselves i have a video about carolyn and i talking about medications mm. you know what there's just we could do a whole to... show on medications i mean honestly <laughs> yeah. we could do a whole yeah. show on yeah. medication and you know the reason we could do a whole show on medication is because we have real life experience with it yeah. you know this is what i love yeah, about I think there's this. huge needs for that sorry i want to show you something I, I don't think i can get to it it's over there People like me, we need devices and tools. We need ways for us to really master this. I, Mary Jane Mack hmm. turned me on to a device. She did a whole show on it last week with, the, uh, with Dr. Porter. It's called Brain Tap. Now, when I get things like that, I'm like, really? I mean, right? You know, because if you're me and you're you, we're like, okay. Mary Jane says, you need to take my brain tap and use it. Yeah. I realize now that there are people like Dr. Porter that literally understand the multidimensional nature of what anxiety mm. needs to be calmed. And I'm telling you, I don't go through a day without putting my brain tap on and going through one of the device meditations. Now, why do I do that? I need tools. Mm -hmm. Carolyn probably needs tools. You've provided her for a lifetime where she can rise up. She can be bold, not belittled. I use mental illness, and this is what I've been scolded for, and this is how you started your show. I don't hesitate to say my children have mental illness because what they have above and beyond mental illness is perseverance and strength of character to stand up for what they believe in. And if nothing else, that is the greatest gift that they will take forward in their own right because they know who they are and they know what they want. And God, as God is my witness, mm. those, those are, I couldn't give children any more than that. Yeah. 
Well, I want to honor your journey and I want to thank you. I can't thank oh. you enough for coming on here today, but I also want you to let folks know one, how do we help you? How do we support you? How do we find you? How do we follow you? How do we do all that? How do we ask you questions? Because if anybody's listening to this show that is struggling, they need to come to you. What are the best ways for people to do that? And how do we support your campaign? Uh, people can reach me through mentalillnessiowa at gmail.com. People can reach me at 515-771-5255. I will offer them any free time they need to share a story and we will develop a plan as I have done for parents sending kids to college for a plan B and across the board to get them into schools. Schools are so difficult today. Um, Kate Kaplan, health and life coach. I am going forward and going to put more of my videos and interviews online. Mm -hmm. So that there's more to resonate with. Mm -hmm. I can't, and I, and you know, Billy Bobo is going to be uh, someone I'm going to approach to get online. And yeah. Talk yeah. And uh, I have a woman in Winnipeg who works. I mean, there's just a myriad of people that we can come together and got to keep just talking like just like this, Dr. Pat, we're got to keep talking. Pregnant. And the beauty of you and I being able to go back and forth is a divine moment today. And I can't thank you enough. Oh, it's, it's an honor for me. And here's what I want everybody to know. Support me. <laughs> that, and support, we'll support Kate. Me. And we'll because, support uh, yeah, Th we have to support Kate because what we're doing is we're not just supporting Kate. So I want to be really clear about this. The angels in my life that helped me were like Kate. And if there were more people that would realize the state of affairs with mental illness in the United States alone, mm. we need to make sure we don't go silent on this. I can't tell you how silent these Olympic athletes have now gotten because it is jeopardizing who they are in their careers. We cannot continue to do this. And I want to end with this, Kate. Bold, not belittled. I honor you and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank Man, you. progressive thank conversation, you. everybody. We are hoping that we're going to be able to have an open forum get questions on this. And as I mentioned to all of you, when we launch our, one of our new channels, it will be dedicated to these conversations, an entire channel. Why? We don't know any better. We got to do stuff. Kate Kaplan, I'm Dr. Pat. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.